Hey babe, and anybody else watching, and welcome back to A Life Together. Today, Joshua 17, 18, and 19. If you remember yesterday, we were looking at the divisions of the land and the allotments for the different tribes, which is exactly what we're going to be looking at today, so a lot more of that. Uh, and then we'll also talk a little bit more about driving people out and making making use of those opportunities um, that, that Israel was given. So we'll look at that. Again, uh, 17, 18, and 19 today. So, chapter 17. This was the allotment for the tribe of Manasseh, as Joseph's firstborn, that is, for Machir, Manasseh's firstborn. Machir was the ancestor of the Gileadites, who had received Gilead and Bashan, because the Machirites were great soldiers. So, this allotment was for the rest of the people of Manasseh, the clans of Abizer, Halek, Arisel, Shechem, Hefer, and Shemitah. These are the other male descendants of Manasseh, son of Joseph, by their clans. Now, Ziliophad, son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, had no sons, but only daughters, whose names were Mahala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirzah. They went to Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the leaders, and said, The Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance among our brothers. So Joshua gave them an inheritance, along with the brothers of their fathers, according to the Lord's command. Manasseh's share consisted of ten tracts of land beside Gilead and Bashan east of the Jordan, because the daughters of the tribe of Manasseh received an inheritance among the sons. The land of Gilead belonged to the rest of the descendants of Manasseh. The territory of Manasseh extended from Asher to Michmeshath, east of Shechem. The boundary ran southward from there to include the people living in, in Tapua. Manasseh had the land of Tapua, but Tapua itself, on the boundary of Manasseh, belonged to the Ephraimites. Then the boundary continued south to the Kana River, or to the Kana Ravine. There were towns belonging to Ephraim lying around the towns of Manasseh, but the boundary of Manasseh was the northern side of the ravine and ended at the sea. On the south side, the land belonged to Ephraim, on the north to Manasseh. The territory of Manasseh reached the sea and bordered Asher on the north and Issachar on the east. Within Issachar and Asher, Manasseh also had Bethshan, Iblim, and the people of Dor, Endor, Tanakh, and Medigo, together with their surrounding settlements. The third in this list is Naphoth. Yet, the Manassites were not able to occupy these towns, for the Canaanites were determined to live in that region. However, when the Israelites grew stronger, they subjected the Canaanites to forced labor, but did not drive them out completely. The people of Joseph said to Joshua, why, haven't you, why have you given us only one allotment and one portion for an inheritance? We are a numerous people, and the Lord has blessed us abundantly. If you are so numerous, Joshua answered, and if the hill country of Ephraim is too small for you, go up into the forest and clear the land for yourselves there in the land of the Perizzites and Rephites. The people of Joseph replied, The hill country is not enough for us, and all the Canaanites who live in the plain have iron chariots, both those in Bethshan and its settlements and those in the valley of Jezreel. But Joshua said to the house of Joseph, to Ephraim and Manasseh, You are numerous and powerful. You have not only one allotment, but the forested hill country as well. Clear it, and its farthest limits will be yours. Though the Canaanites have iron chariots, and though they are strong, you can drive them out. Chapter 18. The whole assembly of the Israelites gathered at Shiloh and set up the tent of meeting there. The country was brought together under control, or was brought under their control, but there were still seven Israelite tribes who had not yet received their inheritance. So Joshua said to the Israelites, How long will you wait before you go to take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, has given you? Appoint three men from each tribe. I will send them out to make a survey of the land and to write a description of it according to the inheritance of each. Then they will return to me. You are to divide the land into seven parts. Judah is to remain in its territory on the south and the house of Joseph in its territory on the north. After you have written up descriptions of the seven parts of the land, bring them here to me and I will cast lots for you in the presence of the Lord our God. The Levites, however, do not get a portion among you because their priestly service of the Lord is their inheritance. And Gad, Reuben, and the half-tribe of Manasseh have already received their inheritance on the east side of the Jordan. Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave it to them. As the men started on their way to map out the land, Joshua instructed them, Go, and make a survey of the land and write a description of it. Then return to me, and I will cast lots for you here at Shiloh in the presence of the Lord. So the men left and went through the land. They wrote its description on a scroll, town by town, in seven parts, and returned to Joshua in the camp at Shiloh. 
Joshua then cast lots for them in Shiloh in the presence of the Lord, and there he distributed the land to the Israelites according to their tribal divisions. The lot came up for the tribe of Benjamin, clan by clan. Their allotted territory lay between the tribes of Judah and Joseph. On the north side, their boundary began at the Jordan, past the northern slope of Jericho, and headed west into the hill country, coming out at the desert of beth Avon. From there, it crossed to the south slope of Luz, that is Bethel, and went down to Atarath Adar on the hill south of lower beth Haran. From the hill-facing beth Haran, on the south boundary, turned south along the western side and came to Kirath Baal, that is Kirath Jerim, a town of people of Judah. This was the western side. The southern side began at the outskirts of kirath Jerim on the west, and the boundary came to the spring of waters of Nephtoa. The boundary went down to the foot of the hill facing the valley of Beth Hinnom, north of the valley of Rephaim. It continued down to Hinnom Valley along the southern slope of the Jebusite city, and so to Enrogel. It then curved north, went to En Shemesh, continued to Gileoth, which faces the path of Adumim and ran down the stone of Bohan, son of Reuben. It continued to the northern slope of Beth Arabah, and on down into the Arabah. It then went to the northern slope of Beth Hogla, and came out the northern bay of the Salt Sea, at the mouth of the Jordan in the south. This was the southern boundary. The Jordan formed the boundary on the eastern side. These were the boundaries that marked out the inheritance of the clans of Benjamin on all sides. The tribe of Benjamin, clan by clan, had the following cities. <clears throat> Jericho, Beth Hogla, Emek, Kaziz, Beth Arba, Zemamim, Bethel, Avim, Pera, Ophrah, uh, Kephar, Ammoni, Ophni, and Giba. Twelve towns and their villages Gibeon, Ramah, Biroth, Mizpah, Kephirath, uh, Moza, Rekim, Irpil, Tarla, Zera, Halifa, the Jebusite city, that is Jerusalem, Gibeah, and Kirath. Fourteen towns and their villages. This was the inheritance of Benjamin for its clans. Chapter 19. The second lot came out for the tribe of Simeon clan by clan. Their inheritance lay within the territory of Judah. It included Beersheba, or Sheba, Malada, Hazar, Shul, Bahala, Azim, Eliotad, Bethuel, Horma, Ziklag, Beth, Marakaboth, Hazar, Susa, Beth, Lebaoth, and Sharuhan, thirteen towns and their villages. Ein, Rimon, Eter, Ashan, four towns and their villages, and the villages around those towns, as far as Balath Beer, Ramah, and the Negev. This was the inheritance of the tribe of Simeonites, clan by clan. The inheritance of the Simeonites was taken from the share of Judah, because Judah's portion was more than they needed. So the Simeonites received their inheritance within the territory of Judah. The third lot came for Zebulun, clan by clan. The boundary of their inheritance went as far as Sered. Going west, it ran to Mahala, Ma, excuse me, Marala, touched Dabersheth, and extended to the ravine near Jachneum. It turned east from Sered toward the sunrise in the territory of Kisloth, Tabor, and went on down to Deberath, and up to Japhia. Then it continued eastward to Gath Hefer and Ethkazin. It came out near Ramon and turned toward Nia. There, the boundary went on to the north of Hanathon and ended at the valley of Ifath. Ifath El, excuse me, included were Kitath, Nahahal, Shimron, Adala, and Bethlehem. These were the twelve towns and their villages. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of Zebulun, clan by clan. The fourth lot came out for Issachar, clan by clan. Their territory included Jezreel, Kesuloth, Shinuim, Harafin, Shion, Anaharoth, Ribiath, Kishon, Ibez, Remeth, and Gananim, in Hada and Beth Pezez. The boundary touched Tabor, Tabor, Shahazuma, and Beth Shemesh, and ended at the Jordan. These were the sixteen towns and their villages. <clears throat> Excuse me. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the tribe of Issachar, clan by clan. The fifth lot came out for the tribe of Asher, clan by clan. Their territory included Helkath, Halai, Beten, Ashkaf, Amalek, Ahmad, and Michal. On the west boundary touched Carmel and Shehor Libnath. It then turned east towards Beth Dagon and touched Zebulun and the valley of Ephath El and went north to Beth Amek and Nahil. Passing Kabul on the left, it went to Aban, Rehob, Haman, and Cana as far as Greater Sidon. The boundary then turned back toward Ramah and went to the fortified city of Tyre, turned toward Hos Hosa, and 
came out at the sea in the region of Akzib, Uma, Aphek, and Rehob. These were 22 towns and their villages. These towns and their villages were inheritance of the tribe of Asher, clan by clan. The sixth lot came out for Naphtali, clan by clan. Their boundary went from Halef and the large tree in Zananim, passing Admai, Nebek, and Jabneel to Lakuam and ending at the Jordan. The boundary ran west through Asnoth, Tabor, and came out at Hukok. It touched Zebulun on the south, Asher on the west, and the Jordan on the east. The fortified cities were Zedim, Zer, Hamath, Rekath, Kinnereth, Adma, Ramah, Hazor, Kadesh, Edri, Enhazor, Iron, Migdal El, Horim, Bethanath, and Beth Shemesh. These were the 19 towns and their villages. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the tribe of Naphtali, clan by clan. The seventh lot came out for the tribe of Dan, clan by clan. The territory of their inheritance included Zora, Eshtoel, Ir Shemesh, Shalabin, Abajalan, Ithath, Elon, Timna, Ekron, Elateka, Gebethon, Balath, Jehud, Beni Barak, Rath, Rath, excuse me, Gath Ramon, Mijarkin, and Rakan, with the area facing Joppa. But the Danites had difficulty taking possession of their territory, so they went up and attacked Lishim, took it, put it to the sword, and occupied it. They settled in Lishim and named it Dan, after their forefather. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the tribe of Dan, clan by clan. When they had finished driving out the land into its allotted portions, the Israelites gave Joshua, son of Nun, an inheritance among them, as the Lord had commanded. They gave him the town he asked for, Timnath Sarah, in the hill country of Ephraim, and he built up the town and settled there. These are the territories that Eleazar the priest, Joshua, son of Nun, and the heads of the tribal clans of Israel, assigned by Lot at Shiloh in the presence of the Lord, at the entrance to the tent of meeting. And so they finished dividing the land. Some interesting stuff here because we see a lot of um, a lot of occupying taking place, right? After God's judgment, God's allowing them to have the land, and so the Israelites are spreading into that land, but not completely. I mean, we have a note here. Um, what are we? 18.3. 18.3 says, um, So Joshua said to the Israelites, How long will you wait before you begin to take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, has given you? This note specifically says such verses as 17.13, 17.13 says, uh, where are we? However, the Israelites grew stronger and subjected the Canaanites to forced labor, but did not drive them out completely. Again, the note says, verses 17.13 and 18.3 imply that the Israelites could have driven out the Canaanites, but chose not to. They were using the Canaanites for forced labor and demanding tribute from them, Perhaps they learned to rely too comfortably on these services. Also, some of the tribes balked at the campaigns simply because of fear. Example of that is uh, 1716. So, uh, 1716, the people of Joseph replied, The hill country is not enough for us. All the Canaanites who live in the plain there have iron chariots, both these in Bethshan and its settlements, and those in the valley of Jezreel. Now, if I read that with a little bit of, I don't know, um mockery in my voice. I don't I don't mean to. I think that looking at that, these chariots with the iron wheels, I think it mentions, with these powerful and incredible, incredible weapons of war, I think there's an element of that that they are right and reasonable to fear, right? We recognize that, hey, those are powerful things. God made man uh, very ingenious. Uh, and these, these are weapons of war. They have ingenuity was created that God gave man, and yet man decided to do this with them. So they are incredible and incredibly powerful machines or chariots. And yet in a much larger picture, we recognize that, hey, this is the God who has done all of this. Why are you not having faith in that? And I think that that picture of them of them not readily stepping into that which God has already promised them is something that we need to be careful about as well. We should be constantly in prayer, recognizing, Lord, you have given so much to us. Let me not be complacent and too comfortable or lazy in you, and so not do the work that you have set out for me. Um, we know that 
Uh, it's so important to be spreading that seed, right? That we're going to be spreading the gospel. Well, are we being comfortable in keeping that to ourselves? Or are we taking the work that's been set in front of us? Worth praying about. Let's do it. Lord, we thank you for your word. And we thank you for uh, the opportunity that we have, that you have set before us to do your will. And God, that is for your glory and for our benefit, God. Give us the wisdom and the fortitude to see that through, that we might not be complacent in you, that we would seek you first in your kingdom and that that would drive our actions, that we would not be afraid of what's been set in front of us, Lord, that we would not look at the, the hurdles and stumble, Lord, but that we would look to you and that that complacency would not be present, God, because we want it all for your glory. God, I thank you for your son who sought only that and came as a servant. Let us do the same, Lord. I thank you so much, um, just so much for this time, Lord, where we can see these, these opportunities and these people and that we can learn from that and we can learn from your son. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. And that is about all I have for you today. As always, know that I appreciate you. Wife, as always, appreciate you tons. Plan on seeing you tomorrow. Have a good one.